Good morning. So pleased to see you here, and I assume there are many more joining us for worship on our live stream. So glad that we can worship together on this Lord's Day and uh, hear God's word. And for those uh, here, uh, we can share in the Lord's Supper also. It's, the, it's a special day for us. It's Christ the King Sunday. I'll go over to our artistic look at the church year. We're on this white bar right here in the church calendar. It's Christ the King Sunday. And next Sunday, we go into the blue season of Advent uh, for four Sundays. So on Christ the King Sunday, we hear, we remember that Jesus is the true ruler of all time. And in the end of time, it is he that will welcome us home. Uh, I'm going to highlight a few announcements first. Our radio broadcast today is uh, sponsored by Bob and Kay Wright in memory of Lyle and Harriet Wright, and that's aired later this morning. We thank them for that. Uh, we have some December newsletters already printed, and you could check, excuse me, check your mailboxes here at the church to see if... Uh, it might be there, otherwise it was either emailed or mailed to you, or will be mailed to you. Let's see. Oh, it's Thanksgiving this week, and uh, there are a couple opportunities for worship. One is a ecumenical service tonight at 7 o'clock at Augustana Lutheran, where we, a few churches are coming together to worship. And then we'll have our Thanksgiving service here uh, on Wednesday evening at 6.30, uh, after that service, uh, there'll be uh, time to socialize uh, up around some nice desserts and some coffee um, up in the social hall. Just want to highlight that the offering for our Thanksgiving goes completely to our church's hunger program, which does good work around the world. also want to highlight uh, that we have bringing to a close our uh, fall stewardship program. Uh, we have a cup uh, displayed there with many notes of thanksgiving. I uh, hope you can take a time to, to look at that and even add something to it so the cup overflows with our thanksgiving. That's in the narthex. Uh, also, uh, statements of intent and time and talent sheets. We're still welcoming those, and uh, we thank you for those who've uh, turned those in. It was sad uh, that uh, Lois Sands died this past week, and we are uh, preparing now for a memorial service for her. It will not be this week. It will be the following week on Friday, December 2nd a memorial service for Lois Sands. And that will be at 11 o'clock uh, Friday morning. Uh, there will be a visitation the evening before from 5 to 7. Let us remember uh, the family in our prayers during this time. Any other announcements that you'd like to lift up? Okay, so the food shelf, our uh, county food shelf, is having a distribution of Thanksgiving baskets from 1 to 3 today, and you can stop by there, right, and pick one up if you are in need of one, or maybe if they know a neighbor who might need one. Okay, great. 1 to 3 at the food shelf, Thanksgiving Day baskets. Anything else? We're going to start our service with our uh, choir singing, our Emmanuel Choir, so I'll turn it over to them.
John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will never die but have eternal life. John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will never die but have eternal life. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. So put your faith in Jesus Christ and your soul will never die. John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that whoever believes in him will never die but have eternal life. As long as you're up here, we're going to have our children's message right now. So you could have a seat, and if there are other children who wish to come up, please do so. Please come up and have time to hear God's word. So I'm going to have a little little fun with you here. I want to I'm going to show you a picture, and you tell me the name of this company or something like that. And I'm not going to do that one. So this one's pretty easy because you can actually most of you can read it, right? Coca-Cola, right? All right. I'm going to. These are really small, but do you know what company this is? Yes. Starbucks. Uh, that one's too easy. Okay, this one. You can just yell it out. McDonald's, McDonald's of course. Now, this one's a little tough. Adidas. Adidas, yeah. Oh, how about this one? Yeah? Domino's. This one's kind of easy. Yep, just yell it out. Apple. Apple. Yep. Say it. Pepsi. Pepsi. Okay. One more. No, got to do this one. Target. Target. Okay. You know what? You don't even have to know how to read, and you can say, oh, that's what that company is. They are so good at getting their logo out that you, you just see the logo and you know what it is, and it probably gives you a good feeling even, because they want a good feeling to go with that. I have one more symbol here. What does Church. that represent? Church. Church, yeah, it's a cross. So we're wondering how we're doing getting the message out about what this represents. So church, yeah, that's, what, that's one thing. Is, does it give you a good feeling or a bad feeling? Good feeling. Good feeling? Okay, that's interesting. Uh, it used to be a bad feeling. Long, long time ago when people saw a cross, they went, ooh. They got really sad because it was only a place where people died. But for us, it gives us a good feeling and a bad feeling. Uh, we know that someone died, we know that Jesus died, but we also have this good feeling that he is no longer dead and that because he reigns, because he uh, lives, that we can follow him and we can know him. So uh, yeah, the cross is a symbol for us and it tells us about our church tells us about Jesus it tells us about today what we're saying it tells us that Jesus is the true ruler in our lives so some of you maybe have this have necklaces that have cross on them or pins or other things sometimes people carry a cross in their pocket and it reminds them of what that Jesus is their uh, Lord, their King, the one they follow. So good. Let's have a prayer to conclude our time here. Lord, 
Though you hung on a cross and died, still you are a living Lord. And we thank you and we pray that we might follow you and live under your reign. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up today. Please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be, be with you. On this Christ the King Sunday, we declare that this is the feast of victory for Jesus Christ. Prayer of the day. O oh God, our true life, to serve you is freedom, and to know you is unending joy. We worship you, we glorify you, we give you thanks to you for your great glory. Abide with us, reign in us, and make this world into a fit habitation for your divine majesty. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away and have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer, or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. 
the Lord of righteousness. The word of the Lord. And let us rise now to greet the gospel. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 23rd chapter. Glory to you. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching, But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Three times in this brief reading, Jesus is being um, provoked to save himself. Save yourself. It comes from different people, but the temptation is the same. And it probably was a great temptation for Jesus and for any of us in such a circumstance when things get very stressful we respond often by saving ourselves, looking out for ourselves. The sign on the cross says, King of the Jews. A real king, I suppose, a real earthly king, who, who had the power to do so, would have saved himself. What good is having such power and authority if you can't use it for yourself? But for Jesus, the call to save himself was nothing but a temptation to undo his teaching, to undo his belief, and to turn away from his real mission of saving the world. We may wonder, can't he do both? Can't he save himself and save the world? No. It's not possible any more than you can, as he said earlier in his ministry, you can serve God and wealth. There has to be a choice. Words and actions need to be consistent with the message that is believed and message to be believed. I can't tell you or someone I love that I love them deeply while yelling it at them. I can't say I really care for you while degrading them with words that come right after. The message and the way the message is given have to be consistent. Jesus uh, can't uh, change his message just because it has become deadly for him. He is faithful to it. Jesus spent his ministry showing what the reign of God looks like. It was his teaching, it came through in his teaching, it came through in his healing, it came through in just his way of living. And now, 
in this most difficult of circumstances, he is continuing to teach again what the reign of God looks like. He shows what God is all about at the same time as we see uh, what the powers of this world show what they are all about and what the, the sinfulness of the world is all about. The people in power, namely, uh, in this case, the Pontius Pilate, who we often name in the Apostles' Creed, and the other religious authorities, they are saving themselves. Or some of them actually believe, the religious authorities, they are saving God because Jesus had too dangerous of a teaching. He was not teaching rightly about God, and so they had to step in and save God. But Jesus will not respond in kind. He doesn't respond to save God or to save himself. He shows that he is a different kind of king. And so, amid the suffering, amid his final breaths, Jesus makes three pronouncements like a king would make from his throne. If we see what he is able to do from the cross, we will see the very rule that he represents. First, he says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. He says this to those who nailed him to the cross, to those who uh, sent him there. He says this of those who are mocking him. He says this word of forgiveness. There, as he dies, he seeks to mend relationships. He seeks to set people free if they are bearing any guilt or shame now or later. It is the center of his message in life and now in death, that under God there is forgiveness to be found for you and for me also. The second pronouncement he says to the convicted criminal on the cross next to him, today you will be with me in paradise. Paradise is where God is, and wherever God is, there is paradise. Even as he suffers and death's power does its worst, Jesus speaks of God being with them today. Not tomorrow, not some other time, but now as they hang on the cross, gee, God is with them. This is Jesus' firm conviction that God has not forsaken him. The last will be first and the first will be last, he taught. And now as he and two others hang there as the last of human society, needing to be put to death, Jesus believes that they are first in the mind of God and God is present to them. That is the kind of reign that Jesus taught and that he believes he lives under. And the third pronouncement of Jesus is not through his words, but through his action, or maybe we should say his inaction. He doesn't save himself. He saves you and me. This is the kind of king he is. This is the kind of rule he represents. This is the God who at the end of our lives and at the end of time will be there as our ruler, welcoming us into God's full presence. If he had saved himself, the message would have been lost. A different message would have been given. That earthly might overcame death. That you can just look out for yourself. No, Jesus must die for the true message of the kingdom to be delivered. And he must die so that you will know that death need not be feared. These are the there are things worse than death, and all who call upon Jesus are saved just from these very things and from death too. Now, as powerful as this uh, witness of Jesus was in terms of grace and faithfulness, Jesus 
death and his faithfulness would have been lost to history if something else had not happened. And of course, that other thing that had to happen was the resurrection. Had there been no resurrection, uh, Jesus' death uh, would have been complete and we would not have known about it. But at his resurrection, we believe God affirms what Jesus did in his life and there, also there on the cross. God affirms that Jesus is the true teller of who God is and how God reigns. At his resurrection, Jesus is lifted up so that he can continue to be the same kind of king that he was in his earthly ministry and there at the cross, the one who forgives and the one who saves others instead of himself. We could not have known the depths of God's love without the crucifixion, and we would not know the truth of that love without the resurrection. The victory of Jesus, therefore, that we sing about is twofold. First, he does not save himself. He is faithful to the message of the reign that servanthood is greater than self-service and that faithfulness and love are the greater powers in this world. That's the first victory of the cross. The second victory is the, is the victory at the resurrection, where, the, uh, where we see the undoing of suffering and death as God intervenes to raise Jesus up. This is the feast of victory for our Lord Jesus. And today we celebrate that we have come to know this true ruler, Jesus, and declare that he is the true representative of God, God's gentle rule, where love and servanthood are the norm. This is the reign that we will live under forever and ever. Thanks be to God. Amen.
the last Sunday of October, we had our service of confirmation. Uh, Reggie was unable to be here, so uh, we want to uh, have him con have his faith confirmed with us also today. Reggie Allen Blum has been instructed in the Christian faith and desires to make public profession affirmation of his baptism. We rejoice that you now desire to make public profession of your faith and assume greater responsibility in the life of the Christian community and its mission in the world. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for this brother whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called him to yourself, enlightened him with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished him in the community of faith. Uphold your servant in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the congregation to turn in the front of the red hymnals to page uh, 234. That's the start, at least, of the uh, Confirmation Liturgy. And when we come to the time of uh, affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed, I'd like you to join in with Reggie. Reggie, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the Church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Reggie, you've made public profession of your faith. Do you intend now to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear God's word and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support Reggie and pray for him in his life of Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Invite the family and others, uh, sponsors, guides, all those a part of uh, Reggie's faith life for the confirmation blessing. You can put your hands upon him as we bless him. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Reggie the gift of your Holy Spirit, confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Let us rejoice with this brother in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Let us acclaim him also.
Please, please rise for the prayers. Let us pray. Each petition will end in your mercy, and your response is, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, you suffer for the sake of love and faithfulness. You are worthy ruler of all. Your people praise you, and we thank you for saving the world. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, you lead the church. Lead us to care for others more than ourselves. Put to death in us the desire for self-serving power and lead us to be servants of others. In your mercy, Jesus Christ, you care about all life and creation. Lead us to care for the land, the water, the air, the animals and plants of creation. Let us value creation as you do. In your mercy, Jesus Christ, we know that power is still needed in this world, and we pray that our leaders will, will us earthly power to work for justice and peace and not to benefit the powerful. In your mercy. Jesus Christ, you bring healing. We ask for your help in those who look to you. Today we name Rona Davidson, Vern Finisted, Sandy Friesen, Laverne Hammer, Janet Hart, Susan Hunstead, Susan Kuyper, Sonia Lupke, Don Mackey, Cindy Malone, Hannah Ulrich, Larry Martin, Patty Ann Meeks, Gary Miller, Marilyn Mueller, Ruth Olson, Dan Panzer, Deb Ruberg, Trevor Randall, Mark Richardson, Erica Rodriguez, Natasha Schiffler, Bev Tate, Evan Winkleman, Everett Wright, and John Young. We also give you thanks for, for the support and help Treva Basil has received in your mercy. Jesus Christ, death is undone by you and we trust that your new life is shared with us. We give thanks for all those who have died in the faith and are in your reign. We remember today Lois Sands and pray for those who grieve her death that they may know your consolation in your mercy. Accept these prayers, gracious God, along with the silent prayers of your people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We recognize that during this time uh, that offering is also an act of worship and uh, in this place we give our offerings as we uh, come come and go uh, into or out of the sanctuary or through electronic means or mail anyways but we want to recognize that uh, these offerings are given along with the offerings of our time and talents and our daily lives as we think uh, we will be singing an offertory, but first we're going to hear an offering of song. And Gary, I'll invite up the men who are in the thinking, singing choir. This is the only performing group in the world that doesn't practice. <laughs> that may, we should, the only requirement we have, you don't have to attend, attend a practice, the only requirement is to be here in church at our worship service. So with that in mind, Gary Walner is going to sing a solo on verse 3, and Steve Dahl is going to sing a solo on verse 2, and the men, you're going to start us out with verse 1, and you're going to finish it with verse 4. And here's the music, the notes, come and think and sing with us. Please come, it's fun to sing and think with a whole bunch of men.
please stand and sing verse 3 and the refrain. Let us pray, holy God, gracious and merciful. You bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now for the feast, uh, to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory are yours. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The table is ready and you are invited to come. If you're visiting with us, the invitation is the same. You're welcome to come and receive. Uh, we do commune with bread and wine. We also offer gluten-free and grape juice at the center of the tray. So you could indicate that to the server if you would prefer gluten-free or grape juice. Uh, the ushers will direct you forward. As you come forward, you may kneel at the rail and receive 
and then and then after uh, a, a prayer or a silent prayer or however you want to show your devotion, uh, return to your seat. If you are unable to come forward, please tell the usher, and the usher will lead us back to you after we're done serving here at the rail. I think that's all I need to let you know about, so uh, let us share in this meal of grace.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Let us conclude by singing the first and third verse of hymn number 431. Let us go in peace and serve the Lord.